um, if you change something and it's because it's got a save functionality it gets mm. really upset if you update something about it and right. it's saved and then it's got like weird stuff going on it's got really conflicting as in the state like the shape that you're expecting the state to be in has changed between the change you've made kind of yeah. Thing? yeah 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 exactly so the the save um data is yeah different shape exactly mm. so so here we go um so the only thing there's there's basically tidying up a load of content adding and um audio to add in so there's no audio currently but there will be audio um and tweaks here and there um the main menu is a bit uh, needs a lot of work so the idea is you're this guy um from uh, internet money and you've got some content to read and um mm. There's uh, uh, other pictures to go in here, but they're not in here yet. And then you drive in, you fly in on your nice. airplane. Nice plane. Thanks. Um, to, to LA. Um, and here you go. And you can walk around the map. Um, and it's, I was trying to make it accessible um, via keyboard as well as mouse mm. and touch. So you can touch the different bits here, um, but you can also use YZ and the arrow keys to move yourself around, um, providing that there's you know something to move Somewhere you to. to go. Yeah. 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 Um, so this key, uh, this uh, node is the first boss. So if you actually click past it, I've got um, the pathfinding, so it blocks you from going past certain places. Um, so if I click up here, it will know that I'm still blocked. Yeah. Um, and my notification system is as such that I can make get rid of these. Bugger off. There you go. Um, and this, this is pretty much it. <laughs> there's like, there's there's a couple of things to the game at the moment. There's the map. There's the conversation screens, which look like this. You can receive things on from those conversations. Like anywhere, there's a conversation, a battle. Um, you can receive items, um, which, which can be actions or downloads. So the idea is that you go through the game and you get real um, songs and tracks to download. Mm -hmm. um, so I can actually enter this by pressing spacebar or enter as well and go through the text as well with the keyboard. Um, so if I go over here... Do you just get uh, another heal? Yeah, you get... Um, so at the moment, everything that you receive, you, re you can you receive again. Right. It doesn't check. But it will be the same thing. You won't get extra yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah everything no, everything's discreet. There's no like potions or anything. There's no destructible stuff. Um, so it's not a worry. So it's kind of like uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 probably worth fixing, but it's actually not detrimental to the gameplay itself. Sure. Um, so yeah, so you can go in here. We can have a talk. Uh, we've got two people talking, and then we have a battle. Battles look like this, and yeah, you basically have yourself on the left here. Um, these health bars are going to change slightly, um, and then you can um, close the battle by fleeing and then restart it, or you can choose from the defense or attack um, screens. There's a lot of attacks in here, but you won't start with as many attacks. Um, right. I'm just just for testing purposes. I mean, they've all got stupid names as well. So this sure. is real testing style of stuff. Uh, you can choose one. It is an animation. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> for testing, all the enemies have like 10 uh, points health. And you've got right. like 100. So you kill them instantly. So this is what killing a boss looks like. <laughs> and then you can have another little chat if you want. And then he does a little like peace yeah. um and now the pathfinding recognizes that that thing doesn't get in the way anymore mm -hmm. um, and then these blue spots are just more conversations um i can receive more stuff um and that's it really that's kind of like the the meat and potatoes of the game um yeah, yeah. so i can't get past here but i can go up here and i can't go over here because i need to go through here um, and there's loads of stuff I'd like to do, lots of improvements. Um, but um, like on the animation side, make the map more animated. I actually spent quite a lot of time. Um, don't tell the client. Uh, 
probably too much time uh, making Taz able to go behind things. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he can go behind, look, so he's he's slightly behind this airport bit here. Yeah. And he'll pass behind here. Yeah. And if we go to downtown up here, um, he will pass through. Um, this is actually um, what is um, t the Tiger Man, whatever his name is. Oh, um, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. This is this character is styled on Joe Exotic, by the way. I didn't realize <laughs> this until very recently. Um, so, yeah. So yeah. He, if you go up here, he passes behind the buildings, um, yeah. which took ages because the map... Obviously, the player doesn't move; it stays centre, but the map moves around. So, placing things on top of the map. I think I, I discussed this with you last time. But... You started telling me about some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, moving the all these sprites around together, but positioned internally, um, but then have the Z index working properly for the character as well was doing my head in, um, yeah. because the character is not dependent on the map, so. It would be easy sure. if they were all actually... It would be much easier if they were all contained within um, what Pixie... Because I made it with Pixie JS, so it's with these containers. Um, that's the terminology. So if the player was in the containers, I could just kind of seed them nicely, um, Z-index them. And that'd be fine, but because they're not, I had to do some squiggly stuff. Uh, and you can put notifications anywhere. So if you want to, any node can have a notification on it. Um, and that notification can be um, picking something up or uh, just some flavor text. Um, yeah, so that's about it. It's looking, it's looking amazing. It's so much more. Um, well, yeah, it's just so much more complete than the last time I saw it. Um, yeah, there's just so. Yeah. I mean, thanks for noticing. I've done. I've done a lot of work on it the last like two weeks. So um it definitely shows. I mean like I can see obviously you've got like placeholders in for some of the names of attacks or whatever. Yeah. Um but I mean there's you know, I mean there's there's always more to do, but it's yeah, it's definitely come a long a long way since I last saw it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks it looks cool. And I know obviously you didn't do them, but all the graphics and stuff. Are pretty, yeah, the graphics are awesome. Nice. Yeah. I, I think yeah. there's there's but there's a bit uh, that I have with the the graphics to do with um all the pixel stuff is different sizes, um, mm. but it looks it looks fine. So it's kind of like it's more of a pernickety kind of purist sort of thing rather than a actual issue. Um, yeah. Because our main character here is a different pixel ratio to the background, and then the pixel ratio of these backgrounds and characters are different again. So it's kind of like the 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 size of the pixels are totally inconsistent. But yeah. it looks fine, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, fair enough. And you can export your save data as well and import it if you want. I mean, it was yeah, it was, yeah. I know we talked about that a little bit before, but um, yeah, like I, I was wondering about the plan for that because obviously, you know, people playing it in their browser or whatever. Um, yeah, um, I and guess that that was a bit of a problem actually, and something that. Um, I couldn't find any good answers for. I actually posted it on one of the forums. I was like, can I use local storage? And is it resilient enough? Mm. Uh, and basically the answer is no, it's not resilient yeah, right. enough. Like it's, 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 I mean, pretty temporary at the best of times. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you know, if someone's on a different laptop or whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I had wondered, um, I had wondered, uh, I know that you mentioned this. There's something of a back end to which is not what you've built, but there's this kind of other site over there which they're able to control, mm -hmm. like the configuration of this stuff here. And I suppose yeah. there's, I mean, like it's probably not useful, like as in it's not required for this project, I would suggest. But I suppose the point is that you would gradually move towards having some kind of API endpoint on a server where you could persist stuff to. Yeah, as long as people were logged in, right? So people yeah. would log in, and then you'd have some way to to keep their keep their details there. And yeah, I assume it's definitely. just like a JSON blob, right? The, the saved game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, so, um, I'll give you a view into that because it's actually I was thinking about it the other day, and the only thing that the player, the whole game, I've made it in such a way that the whole game doesn't really care about anything other than this one slice of data, um, to to get working. 
um, and it works. It looks a little bit like this. Oh, it's been really laggy. Lag, lag. So here we go. Ugh. Why is it scrolling so slowly? Uh, loading. This is loading stuff. Here we go. State management. I mean, this is. I mean, even some of this doesn't really need to know about. But um, this is the the only thing that's saved between games, mm -hmm. and it's basically. Okay. It's basically just like, where are you right now? Yeah. Uh, where have you visited? What's completed? What have you lost? But we actually don't use that at the moment. Mm. What um, actions do you have currently? Um, and this represents what you start with, right? Oh, there. So they're the things you would do in battles. And stuff, yeah. So yeah. Exactly. So index into some other data array. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And a lot of how I built the game is very data orientated. Um, so. It, at the, f at the top of the um, loading process, it's just loads of JSON files and they all represent different things and they drive everything because um, because the web, it's a real different style because um, when you're working with Unity or something like that, everything is sort of in the loop, right? Everything is kind of like constantly happening. Yeah. And although that is still the case with Pixie, you're kind of just waiting around for in this game anyway, just for you to click on something. So it's yeah. all like super event driven. Like the whole game is just yeah. a load of events basically. Um yeah, so and there's a couple of flags here about new games and um your current health and stuff. And if there's local storage, it will load that in and overwrite what we've got here. Um and yeah, so and that's and that's the save stuff really. Um, it um, it kind of reminds me of well, it's some of the stuff we talked about before, but mm. yeah, it's it's kind of cool. Um, this like very clear overall picture of what the game is doing at any given point, mm. because I think that's the thing that like, well, for one, like you see similar things to this pattern all over the place right where you have this like core cool data type and then you've just got these events and they're like the only thing that can change the data type so you have this clear like this is the state these mm -hmm. are the things that can happen to that state yeah. so it's easy for you to have an overview of it and kind of keep it in your head like what's possible yeah rather than having some of the snake's nest where <laughs> you know you you click over here and it changes this thing over here but well how does that communicate over here and that type of thing um mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it I, th seems, I, seems pretty I think it is a, it's it's like that, but it's still very much you can change things all over the place. So it's it's a it's a snake's nest waiting to happen. <laughs> right. Well, I'm no. I mean, in the, yeah. But I, at the end of the day, like you're writing this, you're the only developer. Yeah. So if you say I'm going to do it this way, then you don't necessarily need to worry about all of the kind of rigorous checks that other like you know other no not really scenarios might give you um yeah so yeah seems, seems fair. i don't need to communicate it really to anyone else no no exactly, exactly. um one, one of the things um I, i'll give you a, br a broad brush overview um because when i was going into this um i said i mentioned before that i wanted to use pixie because i like the fact that you know i could build on top of it and it mm. I, it's not dictating anything really um, but there, there's loads of stuff that are hard, like just moving things around is hard because there's nothing specifically to do that. So I had to do all the tweening and stuff like that myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got kind of like the utilities, so kind of things that pr basically aren't to do with the game mm -hmm. are stored in here. Um, UI text containers, I call them group. Um, animation and that's the save stuff uh, and then other like utilities like get me a random number stuff like that um, in the hope that I can like reuse it for the next project and other, mm -hmm. other stuff without too much um, hassle and then here we've got everything pertaining to game uh, and most of these are ch chunked up into a essentially a class per file but I've written it in a, in a CS5 style, so it's not classes, but it's, you know, a big object per file. Um, and then at the top here, we've got Can data. Can an example of that? Sorry. Yes. I'll give you a horrible example. Here we go. 
<sighs> you could choose any one. So I know. A um, big, big one. Here we go. So, function. So it's a battle. It takes in a name, and then everything. So I made it that the global state is shared, right? Obviously, that's the stupid thing to say. But um, you transition two different um, objects, basically. So the battle is this monolithic object. The conversation screen is a big object. And ever, no, nothing persists from the battle once you leave the battle. It just kills it. Because it doesn't need to, it doesn't have any internal state that you care about. Yeah. So, um, ah, so, ah, this is, yeah, okay, this is, this is the kind of stuff I'm very interested in. Yeah. So, this is what I was kind of trying to get to. So, it's like I've got this, um, and I've got a way of working with those transitions as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, so for example, the, the battle is one of these kind of states these objects that you can yeah. be in in the game you've got the conversation which is the same um which is the same kind of thing much smaller um so you basically got conversation and then you've got stuff happening in conversation and then once we don't care about the conversation we just kill it and then home screen intro screen um outro screen they're all the same they're all just like you're in this state it's like a discrete a um state machine sort of situation well that's what yeah so that um well my first question is is it uh inside out or outside in which is to say <laughs> do uh, you've got this you've got this like battle object mm -hmm. is it responsible for listening to events and triggering a transition to another state or is it called by external systems which are saying hey this thing happened or this thing changed or... no it doesn't care about any of that it it, it fires its own state it's to change different. So, uh, so it's so well okay so that sounds like the second half of the question okay. so as in like it it it, it 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 has access to this overall game state and it's yeah. able to tweak it to whatever shape it thinks it should be in uh yes yeah so the, the that um that object block in the beginning i showed you is basically all it's editing yeah right yes and then uh so, so like like let's say you have like player clicks on this thing so mm -hmm. you need that to feed into your so does the battle object responsible for listening for that event or is it some somewhere else i guess yeah all all the stuff that happens in the battle is in the battle object right so uh, other even actually the menu doesn't the menu is hidden during the battle but it persi persists but everything else uh, when you're in a state every that state is responsible for everything that happens in that state essentially the buttons, the animations, everything. Um, obviously, they've already been loaded elsewhere and you have access to the utilities. Um, but the idea is that, you know, um, that object is is got everything in it, it's self-contained. Yeah. Um, and the way that I've done that is with this, which is quite late on in the development, actually, I created this this one. But the f because I was kind of like arbitrarily... Um, kind of moving between scenes, literally like l killing and loading objects um, to load up a new scene in the scenes all over the place. So just not having a like, structure to it. Um, so now I've got the flow manager, which um, is executed um, on data, on um, some JSON. Mm -hmm. So that controls the flow. And essentially... At the battle in the battle you you can only move out of um your battle in two ways clicking on the flow on the flea button or finishing the battle by losing or winning um so in both those th times you call this function uh, and you give it the current scene which is um the container for um the pixie container for that scene um or or is it things so? that can't something like that um and then you check the data so you go is this data intro or outro if it's anything else look at the the json for if there's a next thing to transition to um and there's a counter basically um and then it goes okay if it's one of these really defined things you can only be one of these things right so then yeah. 
um, boot up a new one of those things and add it as the current scene. So the current scene object, um, so the new current scene will be this battle object, basically. So you're const constantly over, what I'm hoping is happening <laughs> is you're constantly overwriting the um, current scene dot scene, basically, for whatever the right. new object is. Um, which I think is the case, but I'm just going to check because what it actually does is it transitions in this like really silly. So that does all the flow stuff. And then I've got this one function elsewhere that actually does the changing of scenes because there's a fade. Uh, yeah, so yeah, current scene scene is whatever the callback scene is and then the data that you want to pass into it. So yeah, so when you actually do change the scene, you can have some variables about changing the scene with killing the audio, uh, fading it, and um, it also saves the game every transition as well. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see. I see. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really clever. But <laughs> I don't know if it's the case. Um, yeah, that's that's. No, I think. I think... <laughs> So it's, it's the thing that struck me there, which was sort of in line with the stuff we were talking about before, which I think is interesting, right, is where it's interesting when people talk about state machines, because I think there's kind of two, there's two sort of diverging thought patterns about mm. state machines, right? You've got the, the, like, the more theoretical side, which is about, like, you know, drawing some nice boxes with arrows between them and kind of defining this like well, it's not about that but yeah it yeah, kind yeah. Of starts it's not about the graph of, but it's yeah right but like yeah. it's much more about this kind of making state, certain state transitions illegal you know because you know i can't receive my item until the money's left my bank account or whatever it happens mm, to be like mm. that type of um and the, and and this kind of high level description of a, of, a, of a state thing and then you've got state machines as implemented in code which obviously differs massively mm, mm. depending on what you're doing with them. But the way, like the most common, I, I mean, if you look at like, well, the most common way that you end up seeing them is where you have these kind of, um, this like uh, sort of overall state machine and it has one state and it says when it receives like update, mm. it says cool, cool the update on that thing. And that state can maybe change itself or return a new state. And so mm. anyway, but the global so the scope of, is out is is doing stuff to the thing. Which is, sure, potentially, but yeah. But the real point that I'm making here is that, like, at that point, the idea of a state machine is much more about code structure. It's much more about like how can I, how can I organize my code in such a way that like mm. I don't have to have one massive class for my player that says like, if off ground and not just use rocket jump, but if yeah. doing this thing then oh, now I can jump or whatever it happens to be. Um, and a state machine gives you a nice way to break that up into like, I'm in this state. So the only yeah. things I'm doing are these things, right? Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, the point being that that very kind of like typical implementation of a state machine is class-based, right? It's mm. functionality and data bundled together. And it kind of, and, and obviously you can write state machines in non-OO languages. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of interesting, depending on what language you're writing in, like, do you lose the, and, and this is exactly something that I ran into when I was thinking along similar lines, where I was like, yeah. well, I want, I have this kind of state machine thing going on, but I don't actually want everything to be its own little class, because I don't feel that's necessary. Like, I'd, happily, yeah. I'd rather just have data that is operated on. Um, and so, yeah, it's an interesting solution mm. that you've ended up here, where you have this kind of, like, it's a state. But it's not holding any state. It's pointing. It's looking at some state over here, kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's funny because for me, like this, it's 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 a real term. Like you you just changed the way I I think about it now because it's like the state for me is the state of the 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 view on the game, not actually the game state. Sure. It's like it, which is in or in this game specifically, that's the case, which is weird, yeah. isn't it, to think about, but. Yeah, definitely. And it's such an overloaded <laughs> term, right? You start to know what is the game? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Well, there's all kinds of things going on. What do you on, actually mean like, here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and, and, and there's the, the, that's, 
I, I think that's again mm. like that's an interesting tipping point that some of these conversations lead you to right where um you say oh well actually it's wonderful if we have this top level data object and it reflects everything yeah. and and broadly i kind of agree with that but then you end up like it's interesting you mentioned fading and when you get to tra think tra things like that transitions it's like yeah. do i do i have the fact that i'm in the middle of a fade and my point throughout the fades stored in this global state i mean if we're yeah. being super like religious about it maybe you should but actually does that make sense and, and maybe it does maybe it doesn't i don't know um i kind of liken it to um like it's worth thinking about in contrast with like making api requests in javascript or something where mm. you're like your state is i haven't asked for data yet i'm waiting for data yeah I've got data or I got an error. And so like, because you expect that to maybe be slow and something that the user can observe, you tend to explicitly have that like loading data state. Um, whereas in a game where you're like, sometimes you want that, but sometimes mm. you're just like, well, no, I know I'm going to get to the next point. It's just a case of like a callback triggering to say, I've got to this stage and moved on to the next thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I, I really, I think that, how I do this every game is going to be different. Um, but I'm sort of pleased at how this has worked out for this game specifically. Um, and this is this is the most important data file. I mean, the others are quite um, not boring, but like straightforward. Um, you can tell it's the most important one because you've called it just data. Jason. I just called it data. Yeah, it's not very. I mean, these things have evolved and turned into things no, that they sure. weren't before. Uh, just data. So this this file holds the coordinate the coordinate system um, um, for all the nodes on the map and their names, which are pretty boring. Sure. They they also hold what is on that node. Um, and down here, stupidly, also the coordinate system for the the assets on top of which live on layers on top of the map as well, which are not interactable currently. But I kind of put them in here just in case they were going to be in the future. Um, but and I, I may have missed something. But but from what you're saying, it sounds like but this is this is separate from the underlying like background layer of the map. Is that correct? Like you've got like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The exactly. the background layer is essentially yeah, a big flat image, yeah. Sure. And then yeah, you've got yeah. all these nodes, and actually all the nodes are most of the nodes are just invisible buttons. Um, so these are coordinates for where to place those invisible buttons, basically. Um, all the all the green ones, all the yeah, all the ones that don't do anything are just got invisible buttons on them, and the ones that don't have. Um, the, the possibility of having a green button when you've finished something or a blue button, etc. Um, for for talking. Um, but yeah, so like you can drive this game. So the, the, I'm, I'm basically handing this off soon and I'm hoping they do a good job of it because I you can author this game through this flow object on any point of the map. <laughs> um, so nice. I'm kind of leaving it with um, their hands to, to kind of put in good text put in good flows of like transitions between talks and battles and collecting items and stuff like that because you can do that all in this flow object so what i was saying before as it the with the flow manager basically sees to see if i'm let's say i'm the first one here which is a battle it goes okay transition to a battle and then the battle just goes, what square am I on? Oh, I need, I oh, know, yeah, it just goes, what boss am I? I'm going to get that boss out and start doing that boss information, which is stored in a different yeah. JSON file. Sure. Um, and you can change the background if you want. That's about it. Um, and once you finish the battle and won, it will transition to the next flow, the next um, state, or it will overflow back onto the map, but basically. Um, uh, so this actually makes more sense to me now. I think the flow manager thing you're yeah. showing me. So basically, exactly. would, does it? If I if I I'll try and explain it back to you, and you can tell me whether I understood it. So so it'll load up that thing and say, mm -hmm. hey, I've got this flow list of things that I can be doing. Yep. Um, I'm sure there are exceptions to this, but like, hey, okay, I'm in this flow list. Choose the first one. Do whatever that says. Yeah. Um, and then. 
at the next point when I realize that part of the flow is finished. Oh, okay. There's another item here, so I'll move to that flow. Yep. Um, otherwise, yeah, as you say, like drop out. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's, yeah. 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 Interesting. So that's and and um, these are just things that relate to the different. Um, well, I can't stop saying state, but like the different scenes, let's say, of the game. So the battle only has these things because it holds most of its information on the bosses themselves, basically. Right. Um, and so you're just saying which boss is it of the ones which should be available. Um, but the conversations and the, and the uh, actions and the notifications are also in here and they can also be... Um, you know, you can add text, you can change the portraits, you can have more than one portrait for that conversation and it will flip the other one onto the other side of the screen. Um, it will change the background. So when, and you can make this quite sophisticated, so you could, it's got no, um, you know, yes or no conversation stuff in there yet. And that's something that I wanted to put in, but um, I haven't had the uh, budget to do so yet. But you can imagine this being more complicated but at the moment you know you get into a conversation and it's with Frankie and he says here we go and then you click and it gets to the next one yo 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 and then you click and then it transitions to the next flow state which is nothing which means you go back to the map um, but you can equally put copy this and then put another one and then instead instead of um having Frankie, you can have Frankie and someone else, and then you can continue the conversation. So you can actually have like, um, yeah, like loads of changing and building and, and you change yeah. the background. If you, you can change the background. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah cool. Exactly. So you can, you can do a lot with just changing things in this data file, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just me saying this point is blocked from this point, which happens to be this boss. So you can't get past that until this point is uh, deemed complete. Oh, so it's interesting. So is that how, is that data what the, like you use in conjunction with the pathfinding? Yeah. To say, I see. So you're basically like, if, because that's interesting, because you showed me when you clicked like way past the boss and it still mm. said like, oh, hey, you can't go here because of the thing. Yeah, it was so a boring like to do. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it was, I bet it was. So, so am, am I right in thinking that it basically goes back down that list of nodes and says like, oh, this one's blocked, so you can't, like, so this, is, this is a no-go. Kind of no, so the way that I've done it is suboptimal because um, what I've had to do because of the way that I've constructed my nodal system is stupidly, I was thinking about this more complicated than I should have. What I should have done is gone, this is how the nodes are laid out. I'm going to lay them out in a XY grid and have ones and zeros for where points nodes are on the thing. And it's going to be super simple to pathfind because you just go, what's above me? There's nothing above me. Okay, what's to right of me? There's something to right of me. But I didn't do that. What I did instead was made this nodal thing where you specify which node you're connected to and the sprite itself knows where that node is in space um, and you can move to that sprite location and that's fine but the nodes could be anywhere <laughs> right um, so we could actually you know just change the graphic and it would just the pathfinding would be the same because you haven't changed where the nodes are connected um, so the problem with that is that as soon as I couldn't make the pathfinding work where you block the actual position of the boss. So all the blockages are the, the next node from the, the boss, subsequent node. Yeah. the subsequent node, because it wasn't allowing me to actually get to that square. Um, so I would oh, get... I see. Because, yeah, it would be like, oh, hey... This is blocked. You can't, yeah, yeah. So you can't yeah, go yeah, here. Um, and I got it working once, but then it did some really glitchy stuff. So I just I just backtracked a bit on it and bailed and went, this is taking too much time. I, I can't... Like, this is a reasonable yeah. solution, basically. Yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, I mean, it works. Right? So when it when it finds a, block, a blockage, it just goes, this is the end of that path. And I didn't get to my destination, and therefore it's blocked. You know, there's, there's a flag to say, is this yeah. blocked? It, it was found to be blocked at this point, show that notification. And then it doesn't try anymore because... 
once you're blocked. Or oh, maybe it does try. Maybe it does continue. I can't remember. Uh, no, actually, yeah. At the moment, it doesn't continue, which is shit for when. <laughs> pardon my French. Uh, when you're over here, and there's a weird, weird glitch here, but when you're over here, right? Yeah. Um, you're blocked from the back. So you want to get here. And it looks like uh, so direction directional stuff is, uh, is matters. Yeah, really yeah. matters. So the this one and this one are both blocked because you don't want to get past this baddie at the beginning because he's rock art. Um, but there's some weird glitching stuff that's happening for some reason. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. <sighs> I'm not really. Aware, but I definitely agree. I think your simpler solution would have probably been a better way to start. But yeah, no. I mean, you got to. Yeah, go yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of pained by my own stupidity, in making it more complicated. Um, in the long run. But next time you make a game that needs actual pathfinding, yeah, you'll be all over it. Cause you'll be I'll like, be like, I got some nodes. I got some nodes. I can. I just. I just represent those nodes in the simplest form. Instead yeah. of what I have in here, it's just a big list of like how they connect. Uh, and oh yeah, and the other thing why that was stupid was because I couldn't nodes aren't traversable with directions, right? Because node six could be above node five, or it could be to the left of node five. There's no yeah, relationship right. in the naming. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I was doing um, keyboard nav navigation, it just wouldn't work. Oh, because it's like you press left, but I don't know what's left. Yeah, there's no yeah. representation for left. So it's like yeah. I'm connected to number one. Like the first node has one data point, right? I'm connected to number one. There's zero nodes connected to number one node. And it doesn't matter what direction it is in. Um, so I had to backtrack on that and add a load of data um, to my flipping perfectly slim data of nodes and now they're kind of um not so i mean this is now what that looks like wow okay yeah, that's pretty wild man yeah so you still get the same representation but now i've included up down left right so that i can do the the button the arrow pressing on it yeah yeah so now it checks and goes oh is there actually a node up and I I, and then I can transition to it. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, you can ask Phil. I I spent a lot of time agonising over this, and you, I sh I so should have just done it like a, a normal kind of grid system yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Um, oh, never mind. Oh, well. it's all good stuff. All yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So that's fun. Um, I tried to one of the other things that I tried to do is always keep the language in all the data. Oh yeah. Um, not that I think the client would have uh, many different languages, but it, there is a p potential there, right? Um, it's nice to do it if you can, if you yeah. can get that in early. Yeah. So, so all the namings have a language attached to them, um, which is specified at the top of the game. So mm. further down the road, if they wanted to, to change, uh, add Spanish in, for example, then they could, yeah. you know, That's with nice. relative ease. Um, yeah, and then the animation system took me quite a while because um, I had all these files and I wanted to sprite them up, but then organize how the animations actually flowed. Because mm. um, I got delivered to them um, by a load of GIFs, so I had to deconstruct the GIFs into uh. PNGs first, <laughs> which is like, oh, yeah, yeah. nice guys. Um, so I had all these GIFs, turned them into PNGs, they had names in descending order, so it's like, cool, I could automate this in some way. So I wrote a function that just takes the name, either a sequence or a number of frames and the speed, and it gives me back something that Pixie can deal with. Oh, so um, that basically, so I, I, oh, I see. So for example, with that boss win frames, you're basically hard, you're, well, not hard coding, but you're yeah. specifically saying like it's frame one, three, uh, one, two, three, two. Yeah. So like, the, yeah, exactly. So it goes up and down on that one, yeah. where some of them just go incrementally. Like and that's it. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's just like a animation util utility for that, um, which made things so much easier because I was doing 
a lot of copy and pasting, basically. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know. maybe it's not in there. Um, there's all the easing functions. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so happy the day I got my easing working. Like, yes. <laughs> Um, I think I even got it working so it snapped to the nearest whole number so I can get the pixels to line up properly. Um, oh, yeah. But then it didn't matter anyway because all the graphics don't line up anyway. So <laughs> Sure. It's like, but no, it's... Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is the get frames. It's like get the frames for the thing, cycle through them, um, put them on the array. Give, it's just a big array that you pass into. Um, animated... Sprite, I think they call it in Pixie. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you want to? Nice. Is there anything? Any other specific questions that you might have? <laughs> um, well, I need to drop off. Yeah. You, um, but uh, I, I do actually think I might. I, I, I'd kind of love to spend a bit more time um, with it. To be honest with you, um, the. I think the thing that isn't clear, and maybe you can mm. give me a taste now, um, <laughs> is uh, so we we had the data, we had the various states that are, well, yeah, the kind of scenes or whatever that are like operating on that. Mm. Um, and the trust is just between them. Um, I guess the quickest way to ask the question is like, where's the pixie stuff? Like, where do you bind that to sprites and containers and and that type of thing? Yeah, um, yeah. So all so like I was saying before, they all the objects kind of hold their own state. Um, so let's go to a really boring one, like the intro screen. So at the top of this one, it's like all of them mostly have a reference to their container. So you've got this top level container for this object, which then gets added to the scene, um, either straight away or just somewhere in the block. Um, oh, sorry, I, I miss. I didn't realize what you were when you were saying this before. But yeah, sorry. So these these are actually responsible for like, hey, I've started. Do, 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 build these containers. Put this right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Build, yeah, build, yeah, build yeah. the whole oh, thing. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and some and like, if I was doing it a bit more class based, I would probably have um, different functions nested in there that does specific stuff. Sure. Um, but I'm using a prototype. Uh, way of working at the moment, so everything's either self-contained or prototyped to that function. Yeah. Um, so when you run this, it runs all the stuff, but then it then waits. I mean, it's all event-driven, so it then does a uh, waiting around for you to click, and then it does some other stuff internally. Um, so th for this, it's like place the background, and for most backgrounds, oh god, the asset, the scaling things are ball lake as well <laughs> god uh, i don't <laughs> want to talk about that okay yeah, yeah. fine yeah so so um so assets asset helper is just me um writing a wrapper for new sprite basically for pixie because i wanted to give this thing the possibility of having an array of sprites or a um and a sprite with i cut uh some i don't know why i did that but I've got like. It was a good uh, reason, I'm sure. I'm sure it was a really good reason. There's like, um, yeah, new sprite. Is it a sprite? If it's not a sprite, do something to tell me about it's not being a sprite because Pixie doesn't tell you for some reason. Um, so there's all these things that I found that I, I like. I put in error handling to help me. Um, yeah. Um, stuff like that, so that I wasn't going to kill myself. I've got cloning objects, which is what we talked about the other day. <laughs> yeah. This is my. <laughs> JSON objects, <laughs> make it a JSON, don't make it a JSON string thing. Um, okay, so that's mad. Um, but yeah, so in all those different, um, uh, all those different levels, they set up the sprites on the screen. They also set up um, the buttons and, you know, uh, event listeners. So here we go. So start button um, goes and gets the start button with some dimensions and some text and that's a helper in the UI stuff library um, and it passes back a graphic um, from with the button and some text on yeah. top so those are two separate things which is why they're, they're passed back as an array um, so yeah so that you, when you click on it it goes to this handle click and then it just transitions to the next scene which is 
uh, not part of the flow manager, unfortunately, because he actually got into the map yet. Um, but it changes to the scene. What scene is that? The current... Oh, no, yeah. What's the current scene? What's the end screen? And do you have any audio? And, and that's right. it. Um, so, yeah. So, every, so the battle screen, obviously, has got a much more complicated um, setup um, for what that looks like. So it's setting up, like, some internal state for the characters. Uh, it's setting up a, a battle scene, which is then going to add to the the main stage later on mm -hmm. uh it's creating a animated background uh using animated sprite i think um platforms sp new single sprite um all this stuff character sprites and ui stuff um guard colors I mean, it's sort of all over the place, really. Um, it's always horrible watching, having someone else watching well, looking at your code. Here, <laughs> yeah, for sure. um, and then the the actions are like, what actions do you have, and can I mm. reference those to the actions list um, in the data file, which looks like this. Um, so it just goes through and goes like literally, what number count in all these files is is it? It must be heal one, you know, if it's like number six or something. It must be a defense thing and it's heal one and it's got this power and I'm going to make a button with it. Um, and then it makes a button and then it refers to that when you click it, basically. Um, and even though they don't like you, um, the pixie people say that their, their stuff isn't, um, isn't supposed to have data on it. So if you make a sprite, you need to look after that sprite some other way. Uh, yeah. Most of the way that I've done it is actually just add name, add um, add stuff to it, <laughs> <laughs> add um, variables and um, whatever it's called um, to the object to the yeah, sprite to the sprite object. Just right. gone. This name is this now, and it has tags and. You just have to deal with it. Sorry, and na yeah, it's fine. And I know that I'm not going to destroy this before it's ready to be destroyed. So, it's fine. Yeah. It's all fine and dandy. Well, at the end of the day, like that's the kind of point of why, like you ever looked at Pixie, right? It's like fine. There are guidelines, but if I want to, yeah. like poke it around, can, stuff. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I, I started down this road where I was like. Well, I'm going to look after all the objects in this other way, and they're going to be an array of objects, and they're going to be, and one of those, uh, the that object might be the background sprite, and one part of that object will be the sprite of the background, right? Mm. Um, but I started going down that road with some things, and it made total sense. But for most of it, it just it wasn't necessary because it wasn't going to be interacted with, or um, it was going to be changed so seldom that. I just needed it to I just needed to briefly query it or get a reference to yeah. it and just change it once. It wasn't like um I was struggling to find a satisfying way to deal with everything, including the sprites on top and collect that data when all of those things all the data that was so small to add to the sprite that you might as well just add it um yeah, yeah. and not have it in a different structure. Um, if sense. that makes sense, yeah. yeah so yeah, no, it definitely does. Yeah. So for most of it, it doesn't like that. Um, um, and when when I need it more globally scoped, then I'll add it in different ways. Um, sure. Put, put it in an array and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's about it, really. Um, you know, there's loads of other things we could talk about, but um... <laughs> no, I mean genuinely, I think yeah. like, especially because you've still got stuff going on um, with it, uh, I'd happily. Oh, I'd love to look at it in a bit more depth, maybe. But, um, but yeah, I think yeah, I think, not, yeah, I think next time we we can talk about the battle system because at the moment it is basically like um, all the enemies have one of two AI implementations, right. which is totally random or pseudo random with um, clever bits, and they all have all this uh, the the same kind of six actions, and they have the ability to be different susceptible to stuff but none of, none of that is actually um, set up basically it's all there mm. but all the bosses don't have different health and don't have different um, power ratings yet 
So none of the like the boss right, testing. So there's not... yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. None of that's been done. So it's like all the bosses are equally easy at the moment. <laughs> <We're> being... <laughs> So there's no the no game progression and that that's ah, going to be quite easy. Yeah. That. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. That's more kind of yeah. like gameplay stuff for sure. Yeah. yeah.